And so I saw a guy on Facebook and he posted this picture and it says, the time I threw $20,000 in the air, this was just one of the stacks. I know this may not go over well with some folks, but who wouldn't love to just stand in the reign of some Benjamins? But I asked him some question. I don't know the guy. And it's actually the question that Joseph asked me the very first time we ever met. Those are the first words out of his mouth to me. This is basically how much, what's the most money you've ever made in a year? What'd you think when I asked you that question? <laughs> I think my butthole puckered a little bit. Did you? But answer? I told you, yeah, it was like ninety-seven, ninety-six. Is the most you'd ever made in it has, a year? It was the most I had ever year, made. And then you told me what you made that year, which was like forty something. Like forty something. Yeah. Was I cocky or condescending when you told me the answer? No. No. There was no wrong answer. I wondered where he was coming from. I think. You, I think you're just like, huh? You can do better than that. You can. <laughs> and, and have you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And what'd you do the first year you were with us? Uh, three hundred and three. $303, dollars, yeah. $303,000, yeah. and then would you say you could do the next year? Um, This is the Sales Wolf Podcast, and this is none other than Tyler Harris. Yes, I'm Joseph Caldwell, and we are the Sales Wolves. <laughs> this is number 53. <laughs> it's 53, baby. 53. 53. Number 53. It's a Valentine's Day episode, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Really That's why I was going to hold your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if he would be my Valentine. Nope. We, we, not even in business, my business Valentine? No, no such thing. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> that does not exist. All right, we are here to talk about the love of money. <gasps> it's one of the dearest things to my heart. <laughs> and <laughs> no, for real. Like, like, like. I, but money is the root of all evil. That's why I love it so much. <laughs> it's not where I was hoping that would go, but oh, that's, so well, <laughs> that's okay too. <laughs> that's okay. I intro this, kick it off, man. People are confused about talking about money, right? This this is a, uh, a confusing are. topic. Like, th what do they tell us not to talk about? If we're out and we're having dinner, we shouldn't discuss what politics, politics sex. You shouldn't religion, discuss religion, money, money. You shouldn't discuss that. Well, I'm here to tell you, rashes. you should discuss all of it except rashes. <laughs> um. <laughs> and this gets back to those of you that saw the episode with Sean Whalen, it gets back to the truth. And, and the truth is what people don't want to talk about. And so that's what we're going to talk about here today. And that's what we hope will open up more so, discussions so, so in your same. everyday life for you to talk about. You hear people say the truth will set you free, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's bullshit. The truth never sets you free. Because truth is out there. Did it set anybody free? No. no. Knowledge of the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. So if you don't talk about these things, you'll never have knowledge of it. And you'll never be set free. Does that's, that not make logical sense to anyone? It How does. about you, Spielberg? Does that make sense? Good. <laughs> the solitary head nod. The solid. All right. So the, the disdaining look I get when I call him Spielberg. So the way this uh, <laughs> the way this conversation got started. So I saw a guy on Facebook and he posted this picture and it says, "The time I threw twenty thousand dollars in the air. This was just one of the stacks. I know this was. I know this may not go over well with some folks, but who wouldn't love to just stand in the reign of some Benjamins?" And he's throwing a bunch of money up in the air. Let me and see. So, so he's throwing some money up in the air, and I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know, whatever. Um, but I asked him some question. I don't know the guy. Man, he looks like a douchebag. No, 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 I don't want to put it on there. I don't want to put his yeah, face on there. I just call him a douchebag. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so it... Um, I don't want him to hate me. So I literally just... Actually, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so I just asked one simple question, and... And it's actually the question that Joseph asked me the very first time we ever met. Those are the first words out of his mouth to me. It was basically, how much, what's the most money you've ever made in a year? Well, I asked this guy, I just said, what was your AGI last year? And so those of you that don't know AGI, your adjusted gross income. What was On your personal tax return. What was your AGI last year? And so this guy responds, he says, how does the post relate? And I said, well, How you're you're throwing $20,000 in the air. I always find it interesting to ask those in your industry, which is MLM, as they recruit others, especially while throwing money around, how much money they actually made the previous year. It tells a greater story, more transparent story, don't you think? And, I, and, and, then, and just so you, let me preface this. 
we're not attacking MLM. Hell, no. we've been in them. Not all, yeah. You know, we're, and maybe we'll wage war on them someday, but not today. But yeah. we're not attacking MLM. We're not attacking it because it's an easy, low-cost barrier to entry of business. It is. Yeah. And a lot of them teach you to read. A lot of them teach you leadership <laughs> skills. A lot of them teach you these things, which we all love, which we, we agree with. And a lot of them have great products. And a lot of them have great products. Yeah. Very few. Um, um, and I said, by the way, there's no wrong answer. Just feel it's important to show people what's really possible based on what you, their leader, is earning. And he said, thanks for your inquiry. <laughs> he said, we, just, we were just sharing one of the year-end rewards that we had worked hard for. And we're sharing our story to help others understand that it's possible for them as well. And I was like, so no answer to my question? He said, do we know each other? <laughs> do we so know? then people start jumping in. This guy named Samuel comes in and says, we're encouraged not to broadcast total incomes in compliance with FTC, Tyler Harris. And I was like, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, of course you are. Of course. And I said, so if the goal is to make money, it should terrify you if your leaders won't tell you how much they're actually making. That's a fact. And I told this guy uh, when he asked me, I told the guy when he asked me if we knew each other, I was like, no, I don't believe we know each other. I said, I'm just a concerned entrepreneur, tired of seeing people sell a lifestyle that they themselves are not truly living. And then he said, I couldn't, Whoa. he's like, I couldn't agree more with you. And if we were ever to meet, I believe we may have more in common than not. Uh, blah, 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 blah. He I, said, I doubt it because you made a shitload of money <laughs> last year. He said, but by no means <laughs> was it an opportunity to create a false facade of who these people are uh, and where we are. And he said, also, those that work with me and by me and know who I am in our story have a strong indication of our income earning within the industry based on our level in the business. That doesn't, that makes it, that doesn't, <laughs> that's not okay. So you, then this other person jumps in and is like, dude, back the heck up. <laughs> I've known these folks for more than five years and they are true, humble, powerful friends who help change the lives of other people. They are not selling a fake lifestyle and I am witness to their personal life and to all their hard work, blah, 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 blah. blah. These are the most realist, the most realists, people, friends I know, and they have they don't have to prove to you or anyone how much they make. Good <laughs> night, man. Uh, and so I said, um, isn't it funny how everyone gets upset when you ask one simple question? To which there was no right or wrong answer. 40,000, 80,000, 900,000. Who cares? Who cares? I just find it amusing how everyone goes nuts when you ask a guy throwing money in a crowd how much they actually made. <laughs> so let me ask you something, Tyler. What did you think when I asked you that question? Um, I think my butthole puckered a little bit. Did you but answer? I told you, yeah, it was like 97, 96. It's the most you'd ever made in it has, a year. It was the most and I had ever year, made. And then you told me what you made that year, which was? Like 40 something. Like 40 something. Yeah. And it, did I ask you, was I cocky or condescending when you told me the answer? No. No. There was no wrong answer. I just wondered, I wondered where he was coming from. I think, you, I think you're just like, huh, you can do better than that. You can. <laughs> and, and have you? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. And what did you do the first year you were with us? Uh, 303. $303, thousand, three, yeah. $303,000. <laughs> what was your goal that year? 300. What did I tell you you could have done? Uh, and then you more, and then, but I don't know if there was a number. I, yeah. I told you you could make 500, then I realized yeah. what you, yeah. I asked you what you could see. Yeah. You said 300, and I said, I'm with you. You can do that. Yeah. And you did it. Yeah. And then what'd you say you could do the next year? Um, 500. And what'd you do? 456. 456. And then last year, how much did you make? Uh, six like fifty seven something like that. Six fifty seven. Right around. Right. That's awesome, dude. I hadn't heard. I don't think I'd heard the number yet. Yeah. Maybe we talked about it, but that's phenomenal. Good job. Thank you. Um, I would. I'd starve to death if that's all I made. <laughs> but <laughs> that's because you have nineteen kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. but listen, that's. But that is, but if you're, you're just being real, like just be real with people. Yeah. Like we pay taxes on that money. Yeah. We, we, so we're not trying to hide it from anybody, much less the IRS or anybody yeah. else. So on his tax return, he can show you the adjusted gross income line and go, hey, what he's doing works. And if somebody wants to follow and do what he's done, they can expect that they have that opportunity. They can't expect that they'll do what mm -hmm. you did. And unless so, the they put question, the work in. so the question becomes, if you won't answer it, then why? Why? And the only reason why? for why not to answer is if you're portraying a lifestyle that does not, is not is based not on the truth. Is not equal, exactly. 
if you're hiding something from somebody or you're or you're trying to create a false like if he was whatever. if someone was leading through transparency and vulnerability and like they were actually showing you the real like person then they they have every reason to be up on stage if they're doing well. Yeah. And if that well means that they're making 40 grand, then that's great. But they shouldn't be pretending like they're making way more. Yeah. And they shouldn't be leading a group of all these people that are saying, I want to be like this guy one day until they realize like, oh, maybe I don't. I did a network marketing <laughs> business and this guy, I, I got exactly where he was after yeah. following him. I got exactly where he was, which was brokered in hell. Yeah. Because I listened to everything that came out of his mouth because mm -hmm. I thought he was making a ton of money. And so I listened to everything, and I did everything, and I mimicked his life, and then I realized eight years later, I was fucking broke and poor, just like him. <laughs> In debt, just like him. And, and, and so I had to find somebody, mm. because somebody sat down with me, and they asked me, how much money are you making? Mm -hmm. And I told him, and he goes, damn, that's not enough. You're sharper than that. Mm. And he didn't say it cocky or condescending. And I started listening to him. And I realized that the secret is work, mm -hmm. hard work. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. But, you know, the reason we're talking about the love of money and we're not trying to make this a spiritual thing. Tyler probably will. He's spiritual. <laughs> he's religious. He's not spiritual. Um, <laughs> I'm playing Tyler. But, uh, but, but the reason that we're talking about this, not trying to make it a spiritual thing and not having people attack us and say something about love and money and how terrible it is, mm -hmm. but money is an indicator, yeah. okay? If, if you're doing something that pays you and you're trying to get other people to do something and you're not willing to be open and show the indicator of how that's working, mm -hmm. It, I gotta say, it's probably a lie. This is the equivalent of literally playing an hour-long basketball game, and at the end of the game, being like, "Man, we just worked really hard. God, you see this sweat? Like, man, I'm tired. God, that was such. Man, we just we absolutely killed it in that game. What was the score? No, we gotta keep the score. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Score, score. Was there a scoreboard? Was it I don't know. We're not, but like, we, if we there's no the scoreboard, score. then you don't know who won. Like, I mean, we really <laughs> won by a lot. Well, what yeah, was the score? Yeah, no, no, well, no, no, what's no. a lot? Well, the, I, mean, a more. Lot. I mean, it's more. more than the other. Yeah, yeah. More than the other well, guys. How do you know you scored more than the other? Well, because because we had look more, how much I'm sweating. Yeah. Look yeah, how yeah. look how hard I've done this. Because I'm because I'm the one talking about it right now. Yeah, because I'm because <laughs> you guys are listening to me. <laughs> right. Dude, that just doesn't make sense. That's a great analogy. But money is the points on the scoreboard. It is. And it's either an indicator of success or failure, yeah. one way or the other. And like right. we're we're empathetic to the fact that, that sucks if you're in a place where it looks like you may be losing right now. But it's being transparent about the fact of where you are is the only way you're gonna get to where you wanna be. Like until you get to the truth, the root of like, okay, here's where I'm at. Like and you may be in a situation like I was in a situation years ago where I people that saw me on Facebook probably thought I made ten times what I actually made. Probably. I thought you I did. had to get to the truth. When you and, told me the number for that year, yeah. I was I went internally yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. And and so you, you have to like you were a fucking <laughs> balling dude. Like I thought well, that's just style. <laughs> 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 what he's doing is he's telling you I have none. <clears throat> oh, uh, that was hurt. That was hurtful. Mm. That was painful. It's all right. <laughs> he said it right when you got a dream. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you have to get to the truth. And the truth is, like, whatever that number is, like, that's your truth. And until you actually get to that point where you're willing to be honest and transparent and show people like, hey, I'm going to get to here to there and I'm going to go on this journey, but I'm not going to start pretending like I'm there and then go on this journey. I'm going to start where I'm at, where I'm at. Like I'm going to start from the beginning and show you how I get to here. Exactly. I'm not going to jump up on stage when I'm really down here where you are and show you how to get here and hope that by recruiting you to get here that I will then be able to go along with you you like yeah. no I'm gonna wait till I get there and then go tell you about it that's right it's it's the biggest it's the biggest disconnect right now especially in that whole MLM world but we won't even get into that because we've already talked about it too much um, but in any field like any yeah. of the events that you go to like the people that are up on stage like I'm I'm, I'm appalled 
at when you really get to know people and really understand the businesses behind people that are up on stage, you know, giving the advice and mm -hmm. what they should do, and then you find out how much money they're actually making. Not that there's any problem or anything wrong with how much they're making, but there's a problem when they're when they're standing on stage as stage as the expert. Like, yeah, you can be the expert in basketball. But unless you go play and win, then what is the credibility? It's all off what you're saying. <laughs> like, like, it's just... Uh, and we're talking a lot about money because it's a scoreboard, right? But yeah. here's the thing, because I can't look at... I can't look at... Ty Tyler's married. He's got a daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm not in his house measuring what type of daddy is. I can't measure that. Mm -hmm. I can't look at his bank account and measure that. I can ask him, you spending time with your daughter, or you are you being a good dad? And he says yes, but I can't measure that. There's no indicator there, sure. right? And but my hopes is that he spends time with his daughter and he has a he has a legitimate strong bond with her as she grows up. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of husband he is. Um, I see him and Maitland together and they look great together. They're both beautiful people. They seem happy. Um, but there's not really until he stays together or gets divorced, that's kind of like the only indicator, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I mean, so 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 we look at, the reason we're talking about money and the love of money in this episode is because that is that is a scoreboard we can measure, mm -hmm. right? And if we're talking about success and how you're doing, then, then that's going to be what we talk about. Even though to us, our relationships with our families, our relationships with our spouses, our relationships with our friends, our relationships with the employees, our relationships with business owners, our relationships with, those are far more important to us than the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. Far more important. But here's the thing. Quantified. Had I not quantified the scoreboard, he and I would never have been friends. Mm -hmm. And I know we joke around on here and, and I try to hold his hand and stuff and make him uncomfortable because he doesn't like hugs. <laughs> and, and we joke around on here and we're antagonistic sometimes, right? And you may think we have that type of relationship away from here. But he's one of my best friends on this earth. Like I talk to him about a bunch of stuff. He's a partner in business. Mm -hmm. and, and that is far more important to me than the bottom line. But... That never would have happened yeah. had I not been authentic with the bottom line. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like if people are in that MLM business, if they're in, if they're in some kind of recruiting business or an agent business or a whatever it is, the authenticity of letting them know, like I used to, the way I recruited like the first 20 people was I, I didn't know how to be anything else. I would just pull my bank account up and show <laughs> them the deposits. I literally would scroll uh, yeah. through it. That's how I recruited David, that, mm -hmm. that crazy wild son of a bitch, that first. Oh, yeah. Did you ever meet him? Yeah, That's how I recruited him. That's how I recruited yeah. most of them because yeah. nobody would believe me. And I'm like, well, well look, look at the deposits. Like I would just scroll through it day by day by day and show them and go, I'm not lying to you. So there's plenty of in this this word KPIs like a lot key of performance industry. indicator. Yeah, like there's plenty of them. There's plenty of them. Mm -hmm. But income is the most quantifiable one that you can actually back up. That's it. And our encouragement coming out of this, and what we really want you to look at as you get off of this podcast, is who are the people that you look up to? Who are the people that are mentoring you? Who are the people that are coaching you? I don't care if you're in a corporate environment and it's your boss. Like It would be nice to know that your boss is actually like not drowning in debt, and especially if you're listening to them for financial advice, exa exactly anybody that you're listening to for financial advice, you have to do it. Like, and that makes sense. don't spend your lives working in, in hustling Those are two operating accounts, just so you know what's in them. <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting for that debit card. Um, don't anyway. spend your entire life working towards achieving what somebody else that you don't really know what they've actually achieved has done. Like, like when I grow up, I want to be just like Joe Schmo. And then you realize when you get there that like Joe Schmo wasn't making any money this entire time. He didn't have his stuff together. So why would you listen to the advice? That's, that's all we're trying to say here. And everything should be based off current credibility, not past credibility. True. Unless you have had an insanely successful career and you are now living off the fruits of all of that labor put in. 
and the analogy that we always use is about with professional sports, like you go to college, you excel, you get into the NBA, using basketball as an example, you excel, you play for 15 years and you become a Hall of Famer, you retire, then you become a coach and you're able to lead those people because of your past Almost credibility added. because you were a because you were a Hall of Famer, yeah. like because you had 15 years in the league and you did well and you scored had scoring records and this and that, like you're able to lead off that past credibility. Sure. What I can tell you is, if you're watching this podcast, you're probably not an NBA Hall of Famer. Right. And so, if that's the case, then it needs to be all based off of current credibility. You need to lead others based on what you're doing right now, and what you're doing right now creates an income, mm -hmm. and that income is really the only way to quantify and put that score on the board. Yep. And so we're not condemning one income versus another. It really doesn't matter. It's all in your actions based on your actual income. Like you can strive for more, you can work for more, you can or you want to achieve more. Or you may be happy with what you're making. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's all personal. Like I, I like I, some of the people on the Facebook page or whatever will Say, well, oh, that's you make this or you make that. Like, that's not the point. The mm -hmm. point is to be authentic about it, mm -hmm. right? And I didn't ask you what you made early on in this podcast. I didn't ask you what you made so that we could throw it in someone's face mm -hmm. or that you're not better than that person that makes less. Correct. It just depends on your journey, where you're going, what you're trying to do. But our whole point is don't listen to people that haven't done what you're trying to do. And you need to know that they've actually done what you're trying to do, right? And so our encouragement from this would be ask them. Yeah. Start asking them. Yeah. Like we want to create a movement where people just ask other people. How like, much money did you make? Hey, how much money did you make last year? And just, just their response alone, their facial expression alone, their breathing there oh, <laughs> you it'll, you. <laughs> it'll it'll tell you everything it will uh, but they know the number to the cent mm -hmm. they all know the number to the cent if they don't that's a whole nother story um, but they all know the number to the cent so the second you say it boom it should come right out of their mouth but what will happen I think will be very interesting when you start asking it will be interesting it will be interesting. We just need to go on the streets one day and just start asking just start people. asking people how much money do you make Dude, that would be awesome let's do that Let's, uh, actually be I'll, I'll do cool it. Episode. Let's do it. <laughs> Why don't we do a podcast? We that? should do a wager. Like we should do some type of like wager on like how many people will actually tell us versus not tell us. So are you saying that you you would go and then to a stranger and whoever? Gets no, because I don't. It's, it has nothing to do with like who's the best way of asking. <laughs> no, because he'll win it. because I'll just be like standing far away from him. <laughs> <laughs> be like, hey. Hey, how much money did you make? I'd no, I think that. no. The wager would be on like how many people will answer versus will not answer. Like, yeah. hey, that's none of your business. Well, you're right. It is none of my business. It's none. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. What do you do for a living? If you don't mind me asking. I'm in sales. How much money did you make last year? Six fifty-seven. Damn! <laughs> you just got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> Yes. Was, no, not where we were going with this <laughs> at all. Oh, but it'll be. I but I think it. actually we really need to do that because I think it'll be awesome for people to see our reaction to that. Because we we were talking about this at dinner the other night. Yeah. Um, do you remember that part? Do you remember that part? <laughs> so we were talking about that at dinner the other night. We we met up with some people after Agent Twenty Twenty One, the Gary Vaynerchuk event, and. Um, and Dave said his. Yeah. And we're like, that's freaking awesome. And he looked like he said it as though he was disappointed. It was yeah. like close to four hundred thousand. It was yes. like three eighty seven, I think he said. Yeah. Or so I was like, dude, that's that's, that's freaking crushing incredible. it. Incredible. And Does then he not the, know he's in the top one tenth of one percent. Yeah. And probably. then the, and then the Canadian there said his, and we were like, dude, that's awesome. Like there's like there was like and and his was different. Like it, but there was no like it doesn't matter. Like we're yeah. all sitting at the same table, having the same conversation, building the same relationships. Yep. And just because yours is this and yours is that and yours is here and yours is here and yours is here and yours is here, like we were all pouring into each other the exact same way. Yeah. Um, and you picked it, up the bill. It was awesome. <laughs> I forgot. I need to expense that. <laughs> 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 uh, thank you for the reminder. Um, but that's that it, guys. It's it's, it's <laughs> the fear. The fear. Um, the fear to let people know what is actually going on is a cancer, and yeah. uh, it's our job uh, and responsibility 
um, to see if we can help that in any way. So I would highly recommend, especially those of you that are in the MLM industry or anything where somebody else's money is tied behind the recruiting of you and those that you recruit, just to ask them flat out, like, hey, I need to know. Like, I really need to know how much you made last year because I'm trying to be like you, and I want to know if where you are is where I want to be. You um, will tell me how much you made. Like <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, guys. This is episode 926 um, and of the Sales Wolves podcast. 53. Is this 53? Yes. So the 53rd the day of the 53rd podcast. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope it got a little bit uncomfortable. Some of you guys are going to go home and ask your spouses how much they made. It's going to be really uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) Because they might not want you to know. Uh, (laughs) But uh, but hey, seek discomfort. Seek discomfort. (laughs) The world will deliver pleasure. Uh, All right. With that, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. (laughs) Bow!